Hey guys, this is Mikey Buzan, and I'm going to show you how I animate eye blinks and eye movement. Okay, so eyeballs are pretty easy to animate, but also extremely important because generally speaking, the eyes are the first thing that a person notices on a face. So if you're animating a scene and you're really short on time, and you can't really, you don't have the luxury to animate a bunch of intricate details, focus on the eyes because that's the part that people are gonna be looking at. And even just a simple blink can bring the most static character to life. A character becomes lifeless on screen if he isn't blinking for so many seconds. This is the first drawing. Then the second, we'll just have this eyelid curve over the pupil. Now it's important that the eyelid isn't straight because the eyeballs are round, so it gives it dimension to have it curve over the pupil. And we'll have the pupil being carried down by the eyelid. This helps to make the eye blink more readable. The third drawing will be the closed eye, which will just have the eyelid mushing together in between these two lines. So let's see how this looks at 12 frames a second. So he's blinking pretty quick. Now the more in-betweens you put in a blink, the sleepier or more slow the blink is going to be. And the fewer in-betweens you put in a blink, the quicker or more alert the character will seem. So if I added some more in-betweens, he's going to have a more stupid looking blink. Or tired, rather. So, again, curve the eyelid, and we'll draw the pupil in between these two positions. Now, if you were drawing this from the side, the pupil would be sticking out a little bit from the eyeball. And it, it helps to define where the eye is looking if the pupil is on the uh, line of the eyeball. See, if the pupil were to just be just outside the line, it gives a very ambiguous or kind of dazed look, and it's unclear where the person's looking. So this is much, this is much more powerful than this if you want to be uh, very clear with where your character is looking. Now this could be effective if you want the character to look a little bit like he's out of sorts, but if you want to be specific, make sure it's clear where the eyeball is looking. So I need to erase this really quick. We're just going to add a few more in-betweens to this blink to show you what it would look like if he was a little bit more tired. Give him some eyelashes or her. It's kind of a sexless pair of eyeballs. Okay. So that's a you know a slower eye blink and if you really want to make it look like he was falling asleep all you'd have to, to do is go in between these drawings and just add more in-betweens. Okay, I used five drawings to make that blink, but you don't even have to do that. You can do a convincing blink in just two drawings. And of course those two drawings would just be the eyes as they are open and 
the eyes as they are shut. So again, just curve the eyelid over the pupil and voila, character blinking. Now you would want the eye blink to remain on screen for at least two frames because if it's on for only one frame, um, it it'll it probably won't be red. It'll just look like a flicker. Now, of course, the style of your cartoon will dictate what type of movement is called for. So, an eye blink of an extremely cartoony character could be done with just two circles for the pupil and then just a line over the pupil for the blink. So very simple stuff. Now let's talk about the movement of the pupil itself. So if you want to have an eye that is looking from one side to the other, um, draw the pupil on the rim of the eyeball and have it sticking out just a little bit to add some definition. So there's the first position, and it's looking over, say it's kind of looking up. Ah, oh, crap, hold on. I'm just doing this kind of quick. Okay, so it's gonna be glancing upwards. So how do we get from here to here? Now, one thing you might be thinking, well, that's easy. Just add a pupil in between here and here. So the pupil would go here. But that would give a rather lifeless sliding effect. So what we actually wanna do is move it in an arc. See, most things in nature move in arcs. We aren't machines. So we'll have it come down a bit before it goes up. So I'm gonna use this as a rough guideline. I'm gonna make another layer here and we'll draw this in black. So here's the middle position. We're going to do this in five drawings at 12 frames a second. And the first part of the movement, see we'll have this pupil touching about a third of the first drawing of the pupil. That way the movement is more easy to read. Let's see how this would look as a movement. Okay, I'm gonna have hold the first position for six frames and the final position for six frames. That way we can see what's happening. So there is just a very simple eye movement. If we were to do this same movement, but with a head turn, we would have to add in one extra feature. So the character is looking over from the side and then he is turning his head to look upwards. It's the same concept, only for a head turn, what you wanna do during the middle frame, the frame in between the two key positions that I just drew, is you'd actually want to add a blink. If you notice, turn your head from one side to the other right now, you may notice that you're, you probably blink or halfway close your eyes. And that's just something we do when we turn our head from one side to the other.
So have the character blinking during the middle position for a convincing head turn. So boop, 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 boop. And again, make it follow in an arc. So from here down to here, his eyes are going downwards in an arc position, and then they go back up. So animate in arcs. Now the eyes are the first thing that you locate on a face. They're extremely expressive, but I haven't talked about the eyebrows yet. Eyebrows actually determine the expression of the eyes. Think of eyebrows and eyeballs as one single unit. Watch what happens if I just add some eyebrows here. Okay, so we get this. Now, just draw the eyebrows in the opposite position. We get an entirely different emotional meaning. So the eyebrows and the eyeballs work together as one single unit. There was something loud going on, so uh, I couldn't record for a second, so I just decided to give this guy some Dragon Ball Z hair. But anyways, the final thing I was going to talk about is the size of the pupil. Now the size of the pupil has a great influence on the emotional meaning. So the smaller the pupil is, the more dazed or confused or terrified the character will look. And what, what's going on with the eyebrows and the face and the body language surrounding the pupils uh, reinforces the meaning or it completely changes it, as I demonstrated before with just simply moving the eyebrows up or down. Now, if the pupils are big, it appears more receptive, the character looks more loving, more interested in what's happening. Uh, so the bigger the pupils are, the more receptive the character looks, and the smaller the pupils are, the weaker or more vulnerable or scared the character looks. So the size of the pupil is something else to consider. So that concludes uh, just a basic introduction to eye blinks and eye movements. Well, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any suggestions for future drawing or animation vids, please let me know. And if you want to like this video, you can do that. If you want to subscribe for more, you're welcome to do that. If you want to connect with me on Facebook or any of those other online places, all those links are in the description box below. And the weird music video that's on the screen right now is called Jan Zilker. I made it a couple months ago. So if you haven't seen that yet, check it out. All right, thanks.